All right, uh, as we have been telling you for the past couple weeks, Mike Kidder is here with us um, all the way from Belize. Uh, I have asked him to come and share with us what God would put on his heart. So at this point, Mike, I'm turning it over to you. <coughs> you're going to have to lift it up, I know. Well, I thought you were lifting it up high for me, but... <laughs> we'll go ahead and bring it up a little more. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, good to be home. I recognize a lot of faces, and there's some new ones, which is always awesome. Um, old friends, and God willing, new friends. Um, bottom line is good to be home. Um, in the past, this, this morning's going to be a little bit different for me. Um, normally when I preach, it's we stick straight to God's Word. We use lots of Scripture, right? Because then it's not me talking, it's just... God's word speaking. Um, and it, then, if anybody has a problem with it, they can just take it up with God. Right? They don't have to yell at me about it, right? It's not my problem. This morning is different because um, in the past, when I've stood before you, we've updated you just on what we've been doing and what's been going on in our lives. And this morning, after, well, most of you know the past, well, frankly, the last seven years have been kind of rough, but the last couple of years have been really rough. Um, <coughs> The last couple years have been really rough. Um, and there's a learning lesson in there that um, I was reminded of. I already knew it, but it's something that I've long past forgot um, of the truth of Scripture. And so I gotta I'm going to update you, and it's going to hurt. And then we're going to get into the truth of God's Word about it. Does that make sense? So bear with me because it's different for me because I usually don't include myself or anything of me in a message. So it's kind of weird for me. So if I. Start tearing up because God's made me soft over the last few years. No laughing. <laughs> you know, there was a time that would never happen, but nowadays it's like, I don't know, you get older and it's, you get all soft and squishy. <laughs> I don't get it. Weird, right? Anyway, I digress. So, bottom line is all of you, in some way or shape or form, have been part of our journey over the last seven years. Uh, whether it's prayers or sports or Ladies who have been just so much a part of Cindy's life when she shoots out a message on um, Facebook. Um, I'm not on Facebook that much. She is, I'm not. Um, but have been right there for her to support her. Um, and the reality is, everything you guys have done, whether it's prayers, um, just thinking of us, um, whatever, you have been part of this journey. So when I talk about um, our kids, they're really your kids too. And I know it is because... I've heard some of the prayers, and I've heard um, the tears in your words uh, as you've messaged Cindy or myself, okay? So they're very much, this is like Jesus, Jesus Community Church's mission thing, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right? So these kids have all been yours. So you've cried with Cindy, you've cried with us, um, shed many tears over the last couple of years especially. <coughs> rough. All right, so as you know, we've been there for seven, seven years now. Last five years, we've been foster kids to, or foster parents, not kids. I'm kind of a kid. But we've been foster parents to four kids, um, Whitney, Shaniqua, Jerrianna, and Jerome. Um, as well as, this is the update part, I'll get you more work. As, where, as well as, you know, teaching and preaching. Um, focusing, I focus mostly on discipleship of men, discipleship of men um, raising them up. All right? And it's gone well. We've had guys go off to Bible college. I mean, it's been some amazing things that have happened there. Um, Cindy does the same thing for ladies, okay? Um, as well as teaching and preaching when invited to do so. We've made a point of never trying to step in and take over anything from anybody. Um, just support local ministry, okay? Um, like, uh, we have a summer camp coming up. The Mennonite community invited me out to teach for the junior youth for six messages for summer camp. That's awesome. Love teaching kids. So much fun. Okay. However, that's not what I want to speak to you about. That's just what we've been, what's been going on in our lives. And I'm sure what most people are wondering is what's going on with the kids. Okay. What's going on with the girls? And that's the hard part. All right. And that's what I know what everybody, if everybody ever really asked me what was going on, that's what they want to know. The rest of it, they just assume is happening. Okay. But the kids is the important part. All right. So just before Christmas, so everybody's on the same page, um, our girls, Whitney, Shaniqua, and um, Jerry Ann, chose to leave our home. All right. Somewhere they got in their mindset that if they were to leave our home and go to an orphanage, that was a, they would have more opportunities there. Okay? They would have a 
better outcome for the future. Right? And I don't know where they got this idea, except, well, I do know, Satan. Satan planted that somewhere by someone, somehow it got there, and they latched onto it, and they ran with that. Okay? And the way the system works down there is when teenage kids, I mean, young kids, they don't really get an option. But when teenagers say they don't want to be somewhere, they move them because, everybody have teenagers? Mm -hmm. Teenagers can be troublesome. Mm -hmm. Right? So when kids don't want to be there, when teenagers don't want to be there, they go ahead and move them where they, out. Okay? Um, so they chose that their lives would be better at a home. Uh, so at which point, we sat down with the um, counselors and the caseworkers, and I mean, human services down there, they brought in five people to come try to convince the kids to stay. Try to convince them. They showed them pictures of how bad it would be where they go, explained to them that they would be split up. They'd no longer be a sibling unit. They'd have to be separated everywhere. And yet they still were hard-headed and chose to leave. Okay? Um, and so, without delay, they literally packed their bags that evening and took them away. All right? That was a hard day. Um, I know that's the day Cindy sent out a prayer request because she was, well, she was destroyed. I mean, it was hard. Um, and Jerome remained with us. Did I say that? Jerome stayed. Jerome actually was an advocate trying to convince his sisters, don't do it. Don't leave. All right? This young little 11-year-old boy is trying to convince his teenage sisters that you are making the most horrible choice you can make. And he was very adamant about it. Um, to the point where they got to the point they didn't even say goodbye to the poor boy. They just took off. All right. So that's been kind of hard on them. All right. So the girls themselves, they were split all over the country at least, different homes all over the place, and um, without getting in, any real young kids in here? Not really, okay. Just making sure. Without, um, they were split all over the place, and as you know through the prayer request, Jerry Ann had a rough go right off the bat. She tried to kill herself within a month. Um, Whitney has been to six homes in the last few months. Um, she just doesn't want to follow the rules. She wants to do her own thing. Um, Shaniqua ran away and took another one of the girls from her home back to Gail's Point where we originally started. And if everybody remembers that place, that was the gang village. All right, so that was very bad. Um, side note, good news on that. Um, Cindy called me a week ago and she made it to her aunt's house out of the village. All right. Um, she's obviously broken, and she's not the same girl I knew, because um, when we knew her, she was this happy, little, feisty thing. She was just, she was, she was just a happy girl. You got a question? How old are they? Oh, I'm sorry, did I not say that? All right, so, let's see, we remember now. Whitney's 15, 14, Jer uh, Shaniqua is 14, and Jerry Ann is 13. And Jerome just turned 12 two weeks ago. All right, sorry. Thought I mentioned that, but I skipped things, I don't. Sorry. Um, where was I? All right, so Shaniqua ran off with another girl back to the village, but she made it to her aunt's house eventually, all right? I don't know what happened there. Uh, obviously, we'll probably never know. Um, just keep praying for these girls. Um, they've got hard heads. They don't, they've got the truth, um, but they're making bad choices, and there's not much more we can do but pray for them, and you know, hearts are broken, all right? Um, we pull, all poured out lots of prayer over them. Um, you've all been part of their schooling. I mean, everybody's been part of it. Like I said, you are all part of this whole journey. And um, so I know it's as hard for you as it is for me. Which brings us to why we're at this message today. Um, I admit to you, it wasn't easy. Um, for me especially. Uh, the first year, uh, when the girls were trying to actually poison Cindy, that was a hard year. Um, to love through that was really difficult. Um, well, they, they like to destroy everything. I can deal with that. Kids destroy things. A little more than normal, but I can deal with that, right? That's not too bad. You can work through things like that. Um, the destruction, stealing, all the other things. I'll admit to you, and I'd be lying if I say it wasn't hard to love them. Okay? And I bring this up because I, I, want, I want you guys to wrap your minds around what happened over the last few years to get us to the, what I'm going to talk about here in a minute, okay? So, I mean, it was hard, and we had to choose to love. We had to choose to love, because it's not easy. It would have been easier for us to just turn tail and run, and come home. It would have, and I would be lying if it didn't cross my mind. Um, I'd probably be inhuman if it didn't cross my mind. Um, <laughs> as, fault, as flawed as that is, it would have been, all right? 
But we didn't, and we stuck it out. And, but however, through God's grace and power, we pushed through all that. Right? It's only by his strength we could have stayed there. There's no way we could have done that. There's no, if I relate on my own strength to deal with that, I would have gone. There's no way. Poison my wife, you lost your mind. Gone. But Cindy's like, no, we're okay. And I prayed about it, and God's like, hey, you'll live. And she will be okay. And so we stay. All right? And so it's by his grace and power that we push through. And his strength, when we wanted to quit, kept us going. All right? His peace allowed us to find peace when the world was coming down. And frankly, I thank you for your prayers. Because it's your prayers that caused all that to move. I know oftentimes we, don't, we pray and we don't see outcome. And we wonder if prayer is effective. I'm telling you, prayer is effective. Mm -hmm. Because we wouldn't have been there this long. And we wouldn't have been able to work with these kids for so long before they chose to leave. All right? The seed's been planted. It's there. Okay? But it's hard. So your prayers have been answered. So you can rest in that, that God does work. We don't always see it right away, and sometimes it takes... Well, I might be dead, but they might be 50 years old, and I'm long gone before they actually change and come back. I don't know. But that's God's plan. Whatever that is, we're, we'll just keep praying for them, right? So that said, the girls left and gave us ample time to think. Because you, you can imagine all the things I just listed occupied a lot of time. And suddenly when they're gone, now I have free time. And I have Nick and Jerome who are just... Two boys that wrestle around much like your boys, right? <laughs> They're just two boys. Jerome was able to blossom. I mean, he started being able to be affectionate towards Cindy, which wasn't allowed because his sisters wouldn't allow it. So he's been able to open up, right? And he's just melted in, and him and Nick wrestle and they play, and he's a little brother who comes up, and Nick will be reading his book, and he's like doing the almost touch <laughs> on his forehead while he's trying to read, you know? Tell me that's not a little brother thing, right? <laughs> And Nick, Nick loses his temper and yells at him, and it's, and I'm like, yeah, that's boys, let it be. Right? You just let them do their thing. That's how brothers are. Right? So that's worked out good, but it's given us ample time to think about what God has to teach us through this, because now we have to reflect. Okay? Now, this isn't a lesson that is new to me, but it's one I forgot. All right? So this may be new to you, or it may be one you forgot. Or you might be very, very well aware of what we're going to talk about, and that's awesome too. Okay, so either which way, every way it is, it's still going to be awesome. Okay. <clears throat> now I assume at this point most of you can feel the heartache, right? You've all been there. If you've had kids that made bad choices and all you can do is watch them walk away, it hurts. There's anger, right? There's pain. And there's nothing you can do but watch. Right? And I'm reminded of the, uh, the story of the prodigal son. And when you read that story, all we do is focus on the son. But this same heartache that you feel now as I tell you this stuff is how that father felt in that story. And we don't focus on that. That's not the story we focus on. We focus on the son, which has a great outcome. Don't get me wrong. It's a great story that Jesus tells us about. And the son comes back, which is what I'm hoping with these kids, right? That's what we're all hoping, that they come back. Right? But we don't focus on the sun. And we all can, as humans, we can feel this pain and we can understand it. We've all seen that. We've seen people make horrible choices that we wish we could rescue them from, and yet all you can do is watch them go. Right? Um, but we don't want to get into the prodigal son. That's just an example. Because we don't talk about the father. And you all can relate with me and empathize with me on this pain as well. But no one can empathize like God. No one understands this pain like God. All right? Our reading this morning comes from Jeremiah 2, if you have your Bibles. It's just, just a short few verses. I mean, if you want to read the rest later on, go ahead. <clears throat> but Jeremiah 2, chapter 5. This is God's word, and it's talking to Jerusalem. It says, Thus says the Lord, What injustice did your fathers find in me? That they went far from me and walked after emptiness and became empty. They did not say, where is the Lord? Who brought us up out of the land of Egypt? Who led us through the wilderness? 
Through the land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of deep darkness, through a land that no one crossed and no one dwelt. I brought you into, a, uh, into the fruitful land to eat its fruit and its good things. But you came and defiled my land and my inheritance. You made an abomination. Now, please know, I am not saying I am anything like God. Because I guarantee those kids could find fault in me just like anybody can find fault in any one of us. Right? What I'm saying is, God knows this pain. Because there is no fault in God. There's nothing you can find that he's ever done that you can find flaw with. He's perfect. He's loving. He's generous. He's caring. He has feelings is the one I'm trying to get at. And we often forget the fact that God our Father has feelings. We don't think of him that way. We think of him as a far off entity that yes, he's in control of everything and he's watching out for everything, but we never consider his feelings. We never consider, consider the fact that our actions affect him. Just like our own children's actions and our children here, or well, not here, but way down there now, right? Their actions affect our feelings. See, the lesson I was reminded of in this is our kids went off. And this parallel here, we found these kids seven years ago in Gail's Point in the most, if you remember, remember the stories, the most horrible conditions you can imagine. And we brought them up out of there. That I, our lives parallel this so well. Right? We brought them up out of there. We brought them to a place where they could grow, where they'd be healthy, where they could have food and shelter and schooling because they hadn't even been in school. And yet, in the same way, they destroyed where we brought them. They spurned Cindy every time, chance they had. All right? This passage here shows God's feeling. What injustice did your fathers find in me? What did God do? And he can rightfully say that. I can't say that. If I said, what injustice did they find in me? I'm sure they could point out whatever. I'm not perfect. All right? But the learning point I want you guys to take from this today is God has feelings. How do we know that? How do we know he has feelings? Because not only were we made in his image, but his likeness. His likeness. We have feelings because he had them before he created us. So he feels. So when we rebel against him, when we disobey him, when we walk down a path that's against his will, he's like the father watching the prodigal son walk off. Because he's not going to say, no, he's not going to force you. Because God's a gentleman. He's not going to force you to stay. He's going to allow you to walk. Because you make those choices. Just like our girls made the choice to leave. And there's nothing we can do. All we can do is keep hoping. All right? God has feelings. You ever consider that? When, you're, when you walk through life, have you considered that? Your actions can make or break his heart? He is absolutely overfilled with joy when he sees his children walking in his will. Because why? Why does he feel joy? Because that's the best thing for you. And as parents, we all know that. When we see our kids excelling in something that's great for them, we have joy in that. But when we see them walk down a path that hurts them, especially once they become adults, we can't do anything about it. Because they have their own free will. And our father is the same way. Our father is the exact same way. All right? Now, like I said, I don't know if you guys have thought about this before, or if you understand this before, or if you realize it, and wherever you're at on it, if you, even if it's just a gentle reminder that our loving father is not, a, is on, not only loving, but our actions break his heart. If it's just a reminder, good. Because you can move from there. You can change. Because what I do know is this. When you love somebody, you strive to make efforts to care for them. Don't you? We do. How do we know God loves us? John 3.16. He's already made the effort. He's done everything. He sent his son. He loved us so much, he sent his son. 
That's how much he loved you. All right? So what I know then is when you love somebody, you actually do, you strive to please them. You strive to care for them. All right? I also know if we hurt someone's feelings, like if I hurt Cindy's feelings, my behavior hurts her because I love her, I change my behavior. Does that make sense? When you love somebody and your behavior, behavior hurts them, you realize that and you change that behavior because you don't want to hurt them. Because why? You love them. Therefore, when we, with our relationship with the Father then, if our behavior hurts Him and we truly love Him, then our behavior needs to change. Does that make sense? It's the same, same relationship, our spouse, our kids, whatever it be, when we have a relationship with the Father, it's the same thing. Right? A relationship with the Father should be the exact same thing. Jesus has done all the work. All the songs we sang this morning, communion, he's already done everything we need to do, or everything needed to be done to restore that relationship with the Father. It's all done. We're redeemed by his blood. However, we must press on in that new life. You can't just say, all right, I'm redeemed and sit down. You've got to continue on. Every relationship takes some work. God's already done everything he can do. And now we have to put the work in. And I'm not talking work saves you. I'm talking if you love him, you're going to work to get to know him. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. If you have a behavior that's contrary to what he wants for you, and you say you love him, then you change that behavior. You change that behavior. This is the lesson I was reminded of, mostly because God has feelings. Because when I felt this heartache of the kids leaving, and I watched it on Cindy's face, and I, I went back to my Bible, because that's where I find a lot of peace, right? When I'm torn up, that's where I go. Um, that in prayer, but, right? And I read through Jeremiah here, and I read that again. I was like, whoa. That's how God feels when I rebel? When he sees me walking down a path? He can't do anything about it, but just say, hey, don't do that. Don't go there. But it's still my choice. It's still my choice. And that's the heartache he feels. What I felt then, what I found out, what I think most of you feel, we've been praying for these kids for many, many years. That's how God feels when he sees us stray. Jesus says in Mark, and John 14, 15, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Not out of fear, but out of love. Totally different concept. We're not talking about teaching fear and obedience. We're teaching because you love, you obey. Our relationship with the Father is built on love, the love of the cross, what Jesus did, what we, talk, what we sang about, all those songs. Brother Manalza, beautiful songs this morning, beautiful choices. Communion. Our relationship with the Father is built on love. But it's a relationship, nonetheless, and we must work at it. We must strive for it. We must be considerate. And if you never, I mean, if you never thought of it this way, it might change your behavior because who really sets out in the morning to hurt the Father's feelings? If you've never thought of it like that, it will change your behavior. We must understand that God is not just a supreme being, far off. Obviously, he's done everything for us, but there's more to him than that. As powerful of he, as he is, his emotions are just as powerful. I can't even fathom, if I hurt this bad when the kids left, how bad he hurts when he sees his children stray. I can't even fathom that. In his perfect love. I can't even fathom that. It's got to be just overwhelming at times for me. It's just got, I, don't, I don't have words for that. It's just got to be, because he's perfect and we know he loves us. And scripture tells us so much about him and yet we never consider his feelings. We never look at that side of it. All right. So I'd ask you this morning to search yourself. 
Search yourself today. Because we've all flawed, we're all flawed, and we all mess up. Search yourself and ask yourself, I love God. What in my life is hurting his feelings? What is contrary to his will? If you truly say you love God, then some, you must keep working on this relationship your whole life. Until he calls you home or he returns, his choice, his choice, you must keep pressing forward. You must work at that relationship. You must. There's no other option. Well, I guess there is another option. But it's not good, and that's all, we don't want to talk about that right now. Right? I want you to focus on this. Think about this. When you go home today, search yourself. If there's something in your life contrary to what God says, know that it's, hurt, it's breaking his heart that you are walking away, that you hold things from him. He gave everything for you. All right? And when you find those things, repent. Repent literally just means change your behavior. Turn away from it. Walk the other direction. Walk towards God. Don't walk away. That's what a repent is. Just change it. That's all, he, that's all he's looking for. Just keep running towards him. Running towards him. Will you fall? Yes. Of course we all do. You'll stumble. But you pick yourself up. And you change. You change your behavior, whatever it is, that's contrary to his will. You press forward. All right? As James tells us in 4.8, we draw near to God. He draws near to us. All right? He's got feelings. He, all he wants you to do is draw near to him. He's just waiting, arms wide open. Loving Father, just waiting to grab you up. No different than when, if I were to go back home and those girls were at the gate. As horrible as the last few years were, they'd be right back in my house. I promise you that. If they showed up at my gate, they'd be right back in. When Shanika ran away, I prayed that she'd show up at that front gate. That's all I cared about. Just show up. Just come. Just come home. That's it. Just turn. Come back. And that's all God is saying. Come on. I'm right here. Just come. Come to the gate. It's open. It's all God wants. All you have to do is come to me. If that's the only thing I can leave you with today, other than an update, it would be that. That God loves you. That he is, it breaks his heart to watch his children stray. I can't even imagine how long, I mean, you read through the Old Testament, and you're talking years that Christ is sitting there going, can I go now? How long do I have to wait before we can go rescue these people? The anticipation and the pain of watching people suffer. And then such a horrible thing of the cross is also such a glorious thing for us. All right? Draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Let's pray. Most gracious Father, we glorify you and we honor you this morning. Father, we thank you that uh, you loved us so much that you'd make us in your image that we can love because you first loved us. And I guess, Father, I thank you that we can be heartbroken over things that we can understand how heartbroken you are when you see your children stray. Father, I ask that you give each one of us the courage to search ourselves. And as you enlighten us to things that are contrary to your will, give us the courage to change that, to change the behaviors in our lives that are contrary to you, contrary to your will, that are breaking your heart. Father, I ask that each person in here would walk in a newness of life and a refreshing new life this morning as they press in closer to you. That you pour your spirit upon, upon everybody here. And that you use this congregation for your glory. Father, I ask that you'd heal the broken hearts in here. There's those that have suffered far more than I have. Those that are in anguish. Father, I ask that you pour your peace upon them. And Father, those, of us, those who have cried with us over the girls... I said, you just give them strength. Give them peace. 
Father, would you lift up the kids to you as you watch over them wherever they're at? Comfort and protect them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Oh, I should say that one of their family members has stood up and is trying to get okay with human services to take the girls in, to pull them out of the homes. That happened just like last week. That just crossed my mind. Sorry, I would have included that earlier. But um, one of their aunts, Cindy's been talking to her for seven years now. So we know who she is. She's married to a police officer. I've had an interesting relationship with a police officer, so I don't know about that one. But she seems like a caring, nice lady, right? And she's trying to get her home and life ready so that she could actually bring the kids in. Um, so if you pray for that, if that's the outcome that God has for them, that'd be awesome because at least they'd be back together, right? So, and if any other news comes up, I'll forward it somehow. All right?